help me if I cannot help myself? All right, let me bring, just very quickly, Imam, Tarek, very quickly, Tarek Ramadan please. was prevented from entering in this particular case because he made statements against Israel, just to point the issue of the Israeli connection. However, having said that, the issue, we are challenged in the West. A friend of mine, a journalist, who really is very sympathetic to our situation, says the problem that, they, that the Western has, they're confused. They can understand political liberation movements. They can understand, for example, political front for the liberation of Palestine. What they cannot understand is Gama Islamiya, Hezbollah. Why is it, they said, that throughout the Muslim world, political liberation movements use the vocabulary of Islam? And until and unless we Muslims can help them delink this link, it is hard for them not to see Islam as militant. So part of the battle that we have, both within our own tradition and vis-a-vis -vis the West, is we need to make, to make these delinkages, if you will. Okay, question from the front, please. Yes, uh, I have a question to Ms. Sarah Ramzi. Uh, you said that the war in, uh, in this region, in the Middle East, is uh, against uh, wealth or uh, geopolitics reasons. Is that right? Okay, do you think that it's a coincidence that they only want the oil of Afghanistan, all the oil of Iraq, all the resources in the other, in the other Arabic or Islamic countries, and why not they take the other resources that is in, dif in different places in the world. The point is that America's interest in oil is because it is in Islamic states. No, the, the interest they do in happen oil. to have a preponderance of oil. Yes, what I mean is like uh, it's, it can't be like a coincidence that all of the wealth that they seek is in Islamic states. Like there is oil, as you say, oil is important, but there is also oil in different countries. In oh, the world. but the vast majority of oil reserves are here in this region. And this, is, and, this is, and this is extremely important, and this makes this region extremely important. But I want to also, I want to also uh, 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 look, look at American foreign policy. The friends of yesterday are today's enemy. The Americans supported the Mujahideen in order to attack the Soviet Union. They gave them arms, they gave them wealth, they opened the door for them, and they went, became, became strong. They didn't need them anymore. They became to, the, their enemies today. Those Islamist Shiites in Iraq who are allies of the United States in Iraq today, only a couple of years back, were, were, were the enemy of the United States of okay. America. Okay, Anasad Tukriti, you wanted to come in here. There is a problem within the West um, in regards with when the rhetoric that we emit, or we broadcast, um, contains Islamic references. The liberation um, efforts and the such are fine, as you said, although I also have my reservations regarding that. But the problem is this interlinking, interrelationship between Islam and politics, Islam and these liberation movements. I think that we have tried, and this is where I say that we have been failed time and time again. The media is part of it, but it's not just the media. There is a predominant ideology there that um, wishes to Can we get back to the motion than the, moderate, than, 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 than the moderate mainstream. The issue is that we, as Muslims, the vast majority of the Muslim public, whether the Arab world or beyond, have, have chosen uh, to, to exercise politics with the Islamic reference. Now that, if it's going to be rejected, then I'm, I'm, I'm sure that we're going to be in for this for, okay, for let long me take a Okay, let me take a question from the lady. It may be that the intention of this war is not exactly a war on Islam itself. Maybe not, maybe not the intention. But the fact is that many Muslims, many women that wear hijab and many men that have beards in the United States or in other Western countries feel discriminated against and feel as if their, their name, just because they are Muslim, that, that they're discriminated against and that they should be out of this country. I know you know, family relatives who had to leave the United States for this reason because they're discriminated against just because of the hijab or, you know, their beards. How do you answer that? The underlying question you point out is an important one. And that is the difference between perception and reality. What we've tried to show thus far is that what drives U.S. policy is not anti-Islam as such. Are there certain individuals, perhaps the indi individuals in positions of influence who have a fear of Islam? No doubt about it. But you have to look at the preponderance of evidence. The preponderance of evidence, the preponderance of what the US policy is driven by, very clearly indicates that there is not hostility to Islam as such, but things that are offensive to Islam that are that. OK, let me now, ask if, the question is there a perception? She... Is there a perception in the Muslim world that there is? Yes, there is. But perceptions are not reality. And it's very important for us to, 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 to to advocate against that the linkage because okay, we can, can we, make this a war of religion. Okay, can we ask the question of, of whether she whether she accepts what you've been saying? A 
Okay, so you're saying you you agree that the perception of the world is that you know, for example, the woman wearing the hijab is discriminated against. If if these people are being discriminated against, does that not mean that this is a war on is on Muslims? Therefore, if it's a war on Muslims, it's a war on Islam. How do you define that in the United States or in other Western countries? Well, that's too simplistic because even the Muslims in France, for instance, supported the government in its position. The issues within these that's, particular that's nations, correct, that's the, 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 well, they, they didn't want the interference of outside of non-Muslims on, on this internal issue between French Muslims and their government. There is an issue of how to integrate Muslims within Western societies, and that is part of what we have to do. But the big important point, which we really have to remember very much, is that we can shape this war the way we want. If we are more proactive, if Muslims are more proactive, if they, if they are able to, to, to advocate their issues well in Washington, D.C., and, and be stronger in our lobbying capacity, we can, we can shape this war. If we allow this to slip into a religious war, it is going to be dangerous. Okay, gentlemen at the back. Um, my question is, would the Western reaction to the atrocities of 9-11 and Madrid have been less forceful had it not been a Muslim faction that had accepted responsibility for these acts? Grand Mufti, do you want to take that question? Uh, I, I think that even before 11th of September and Madrid and uh, Holland, I think uh, some Muslims would complain. But the 11th of September gave the courage uh, to other people around the world to uh, somehow develop uh, something against Muslims and Islam that we didn't see before. Let me so you just think people are using that as a pretext to attack Muslims? Uh, probably. Uh, uh, most, most of, uh, especially those uh, dictators uh, around the world that wanted to please uh, the uh, President Bush's uh, determination to go after those who have committed this uh, uh, terror or terrorism in New York and uh, in Washington. And then, unfortunately, uh, I think that uh, President uh, Bush apologized later on when he used the term crusade. I know that for many Christians, the crusade means good things, a lot of good things, crusade for education, other things. But for Muslims, it means only one thing, the war against Islam and Muslims. In the same way as the jihad for Muslims means many good things. For the, but for the Christians and Jews and others, non-Muslims, jihad means only one thing, violence against them. Okay, so I see, would, I, my, proposal, is my proposal is that we should avoid using both crusade and jihad in order to avoid the embarrassment of all. You're going world. to impose that in Bosnia. You have the we are imposing that already. You're imposing it yes. already. Okay, are you satisfied with the answer you had? Not really. If it had been North Korea that had... Um, done the attacks on 9-11, it would have just been just as, a for, just as forceful an act against that country as any other, and it's not just solely because there's this perceived disdain for Islam in America and Western countries. Can I ask you want to come back to that? No. Can I ask the gentleman a question? Do you realize that um, the vast majority, if not every single Muslim state, condemned outrightly 9-11, in fact, indeed, including the Taliban government themselves? Does it make a difference in our perception, in our minds, that every single mainstream Muslim organization living in, in the Muslim world as well as the West has condemned time and time again for the past four years 9-11, and they will continue seemingly to do so for the next 10 or 15 years? Gentlemen at the, towards the back there. The question is, what if I was a citizen of Turkey? How would I feel? if my country was not allowed to enjoy the benefits of the European Union just because the majority of its uh, uh, members are Muslims? Well, certainly that is the very, uh, we agree with you, and we agree with the position of Mustafa Cherich on the fact that, uh, that the perception among, in much of the Muslim world is that the reason why Turkey is not admitted into the European Union is because it is an Islamic nation. I've well, said, it, may, I've well said be, this it may well be admitted into the European Union. And it, it may well be yet. So but the, the, but, but the, the fact the of them about Turkey, uh, it's very interesting and I think it's proof to our motion. And that is because those who accept Turkey are saying it's left behind Islam. And those who are rejecting Turkey are saying it hasn't left Islam enough. So in either I case, I don't think Islam that's the taxing. argument of everybody, that it's left well, behind the, Islam, the, the, the that, that, that it's a bridge between Islam and the rest of Europe. A that, lot of people are citing that as a reason. That's a very minute element, and I wish that they would have bigger microphones in front of them when they, when they speak. Gentlemen, once come and back. The fact well, of the matter is, let the question come back. Two points. Can we just let the question come back here? Because he just wants to make another point. I do realize that in time, the Turkey will 
uh, hopefully get, a, get accepted to your opinion because it is just decision. The fact